NBA trades that would separate contenders from pretenders. Grant Hughes uh, from Bleach Report. And anytime you, I see trades and I see somebody in this Sh Chicago jersey, actually a jersey that the, the uh, NBA, I'm oh, not the NBA, the Chicago Bulls sent me. So shout out to, to, the, to the Bulls, crazy stuff. Anytime I see somebody in a trade that is involved with the Bulls, I got to react to it at least. Leave a like, subscribe. New episode of the Kenny Beach Podcast just dropped. We talked about the Lakers struggles, the 76ers and how good they are, the Clippers struggles post James Harden. It's a lot of conversation. Go tune in. We got a special guest coming on the show later. I'm just saying, I'm just saying you might want to tune in now before it's like the number one podcast in the world or something. It's not going to ever be that. But let's talk about this article and figure out if we think these trades are good trades or not the first one is the 76ers cash in on their hardened earned assets and this is um, a Zach Levine oriented trade let's see the 76ers receive Zach Levine from the Chicago Bulls Marcus Moore senior Nicholas Batum Robert Covington a 2026 first round pick top four protected the least value of a Houston Clippers OKC pick and a 2028 first round pick via the Clippers and a 2029 first rounder technically that is three first round picks and players that you don't really care about but this is a hard reset for the Chicago Bulls or a light reset, depending on what they do with DeMar, Vooch, and so on and so forth. I'm going to say I don't like this trade for either team. Um, I, I've been very opinionated when it comes to the fit of Zach Levine and Tyrese Maxey or Zach Levine and, and Joel and B. Because though Zach Levine is a good NBA player, a great NBA player, if you will, he doesn't feel the voids that they have as a team, Right. Having another bucket getter, you'll take that, but that's not necessarily what they need long term. I also worry what that does to Tyrese Maxey and, and him on the ball as much as he is because he's looked so very good in it. And, and it could fit. It could work. But like, I'm less optimistic of the fit between those three players as most people are. So I would say this is a pass from the 76ers, which is crazy to say aloud because I would expect... The Bulls to maybe trade Zach Levine for more than just three lightly or heavily protected first round picks. But I just don't like the fit. It's an increase in talent, but they're a talented team as is. And what I've noticed over the past week since they've done the trade, they have a really decent bench. And part of that is Nicholas Batum and Robert Covington coming off of it and, and really provide an offensive umph with Patrick Beverly and stuff. And you're getting rid of two of those things. Replacement, you get Zach Levine, who can fill it up, drop 25 a night potentially. But again, it's not necessarily something you need. I'm more of a fan of different trades. And I don't know if some of those trades will be here. So I don't want to spoil it. Second trade is the Kings locked down a defender. All right. Um, it's OG Adenobi from the Toronto Raptors. For Keegan Murray, Kevin, Her Ke Ke Kevin Herter, a 2027 first round pick, and a 2029. That is a lot, man. That is a lot of value for OG Ananobi. If I am the Toronto Raptors, I am trying my hardest to convince OG to stay. I would most mostly try to build around Scotty while having OG as a guy that can fit alongside him. I would try to think more about moving Pascal Siakam in a retooling versus OG Ananobi. But if we believe that he won't resign since he is an unrestricted free agent next season, this pack, this trade package is kind of crazy. Actually, I think it's crazy for the Kings, and and not because OG Ananobi doesn't add crazy value to that team that struggles struggles defensively. But because two of their starters are going out of the door and you're like, okay, what do we replace that with? Now Malik Monk is inserted into the starting lineup. Can he be a start in this league? Absolutely. But I like the connection I saw between Kevin Herter and DeMontis Sabonis last year. I like the potential of Keegan Murray, who hasn't had an amazing sophomore season so far, but it's a sophomore season. And you're adding two first-round picks of 2027 and 2029? Well, you don't even know if you're going to be able to retain OG Ananobi. This is a crazy trade if you're the Kings. Um, if you're the Raptors, though, and you believe that OG is going to be gone, this is a really good trade because one thing that the this team is missing from the Raptors, at least, is adequate three-point shooting. Uh, they don't really have that. And Kevin Hurd is one of the better ones in the game. And then Keegan Murray is really good at it as well. So that feels a void there. And you're getting these first-round picks from the Kings. I would do this if I believe OG's not resigning. But if I'm the Kings, I'm not giving up this much for a oh, last year of contract OG. I don't know. Next one is going to be... Oh, man, the Knicks snag reigning MVP. Now, again, I just mentioned how much I really enjoyed the, the, what Joel Embiid is doing right now. I talked about it extensively on the pod. So, But this is uh, Joel Embiid and Marcus Moore Sr. from the Philadelphia 76 for R.J. Bear, Mitchell Robinson, Emmanuel Quickly, Julius Randle, a first-round pick, two first-round picks, three first-round picks, four first-round picks, five first-round picks. Whoa. Now, if they ever have to cross that bridge of trade and Joel Embiid, this is a trade package that doesn't seem bad. 
You get RJ Barrett, who's having the best start of his NBA career. Is it sustainable? I don't really know. You get Mitchell Robinson, another young player. Emmanuel Quickly, another young player. You get Julius Randle, a previous all-star. But the, it's the draft capital that I'm most interested in. The one first-round pick from Dallas is top 10 protected. The second one is top four protected. And then the other ones are completely unprotected. This is the type of trade, if I'm trading away a superstar player, that I would be interested in. I just don't think this is a reality. Unless Joel Embiid walks and looks in Daryl Morey in his eyeballs and say, I want to be traded. I'm not thinking about trading Joel Embiid because we look good right now and he looks great. But if you're the Knicks, man, that's three starters and a, a six-man-of-the-year candidate that you're giving up. So the new team is what? Jalen Brunson, Quinn Grimes, Josh Hart. Yeah, Josh Hart is still there. Who's running at four now? Because you did trade away your four in Obi Toppin. Maybe it's DiVincenzo and Josh Hart because Josh Hart plays like a four sometimes. And then Joel Embiid. I don't know. You're just giving up a lot of depth plus a lot of capital. But it is New York and they're looking for their superstar. If Joel Embiid is available, it is a trade that I would be interested in maybe. Maybe try to turn down the value a little bit. Maybe keep a piece here or there. But, you know. Next one is Dallas gets defensive. Jay Sean Tate from the Houston Rockets. For Dwight Powell, a second round pick, two second round picks. Oh, all these other trades are like bigger trades. I just didn't expect the trade to be Jay Sean Tate being the star of it. Um, Cool. I mean, Jay Sean Tate is a guy that plays a good amount, but with all of the young wings they have on the team, maybe you're trying to open up some, some time. Cam Whitmore's in the G right now, hooping and stuff. And maybe like, hey, we just trade him away for two seconds and then bada boom, bada bam. I just, it's not even worth it going full camp for it's just a small trade uh oh new orleans new orleans uh mikhail bridges for jordan hawkins jonas valanciunas and four first round picks that's so interesting because they just say four first round picks here but in this trade they showed you exactly what the five, one two three four five first round picks were and this one they say hey just pick four of our picks it just will make it happen the direction that the the brooklyn nets go in is one of the biggest questions for me as a fan because they're good enough to just be competent and win games here and there um, but obviously, there's a ceiling on their core right now, and I question, what do they plan to do? They got a lot of players that are real NBA players, you know, from Spencer Denwardy, Dorian Finney-Smith, so on and so forth. They have a lot of real players. I don't know if you're trading Mikael Bridges right now, but if you are trading them away, getting four first-round picks for them is pretty cool. I think there is a rumor that um, the the Memphis Grizzlies offered about four first-round picks for Mikael Bridges last year, um, and they said no for it so now they would say maybe yes and then get a few uh, past first round pick in jordan hawkins who is uh pretty good pretty good his shots not falling great but it, they will it will eventually so uh, i don't know how to feel about this one um as far as the fit between mikhail bridges with those other guys because they don't have any shooting in, in new orleans and mikhail can provide that it kind of diminishes mikhail's role again where he's back to being like the third option mostly because of brandon ingram and zion and stuff Sometimes even fourth option because of uh, CJ McCollum when he comes back from his collapsed lung get well soon. Um, so that scares me a little bit, playing first four first-round picks for a guy that's at best your third option. But, you know, you know, I don't know. This one is specifically for the Lakers. So it's more trades, but specifically from the Lakers. It's from Eric Pingus um, talking about the Lakers and is it time to panic for a third star? Uh, which is always a conversation at this round, this time of the season for the LA Lakers. So let's see what they have drawn up here. Uh, what are the limitations? Who can and can't be traded right now or later? Um, th these guys like Daniel Russell, Rui Hachimura can't be traded until what? Uh, December 15th, I think is the day. Oh, no, I'm completely wrong here. Uh, most of the people get traded around February 8th. Um, and then uh, January 15th for people like Rui Hachimura, Austin Reeves. And then the 15th. It's for D'Angelo Russell, Gabe Vincent, Torian Prince, and this group of guys. But it's kind of all over the place at the moment. First trade has to do with Kyrie Irving. And, oh, they actually have the trades. All right. Kyrie Irving and Markeith Morris for D'Angelo Russell, Rui Hachimura, Jalen Hood, Chifino. Irving waives his trade bonus to get to the Lakers. Otherwise, the deal becomes even more challenging. Dallas needs to open up a roster spot to make the deal legal by waiving or trading. I don't see this as a likelihood. The Dallas Mavericks are playing good basketball. Um, and he's kind of chilling. He just signed the contract. So I don't think this is a likelihood, but who knows? You know, we're talking about trades that would have to happen later in the season. And who knows exactly who stands where. Um, but trading Kyrie Irving for no first round draft capital. Uh, and you're getting back players that are cool. But does this move the needle for Luka Doncic? The answer is no. The next one, Mar comes home. All right, let's, let's, see, let's see what this looks like. DeMar DeRose and Alice Caruso, Andre Drummer for D'Angelo Russell, Rui Hachimura, and Jalen Hush. I'm telling you this right now. 
if a trade like this happened, I would be pissed. Not because we're trading away the players, because I think the team should be trading away the players. But a guy like Alice Caruso, if we trade away Alice Caruso, and I'm saying this right now, so once once the reality hits, you can know that I mean this. If we trade away Alice Caruso and we don't get at least a first round pick in exchange for it, everybody in the front office needs to be fired. I'm not. I don't feel the same about Demar or anybody else. Alice Caruso going to a contending team is worth a first round pick, minimum one, minimum one. We'll accept more. So to do this deal. Were we giving away last year for his deal, DeMar DeRozan? And again, I, I'm not tripping about DeMar. Alex Caruso and one of the greatest rebounders of all time. And get back D'Angelo Russell Rui and the Jalen Hushafina. I'd be pissed. I also don't like it for the Lakers because DeMar DeRozan is not a player that you necessarily come in and you put, plug and play. Um, he adds another score on the team, which is cool and all, but I just don't know his fit alongside LeBron or Anthony Davis. It's a team that already struggles to hit three-point shots. And guess what? They're trading for three not great shooters. DeMar doesn't do it. Alex Caruso's okay. And obviously Drummond doesn't do that. And they're trading away Diaz or Russell and Rui Hachimura who are struggled, but uh, at least threats from behind the arc. These guys, maybe not so much. The next one says Zach Levine instead. So the Bulls are in all of these conversations. Zach Levine, Tory, Tory Craig, uh, Terry Taylor for D'Angelo Russell, Rui Hachimura, Torian Prince, Jalen Hushafino, and a lightly protected 2029 first round pick. Oh, man. Is that what we got with our value? That the that they were traded Zach Levine away for a lightly protected first round pick? Because that's what this is. Maybe Jayla Hushafino turns into something, but who knows? That's basically what this trade is. I hate it. Um, I think the fit for the Lakers is is ridiculously great, though. When it comes to like if you're a Lakers fan, you're trying to figure out, do we rather we rather take DeMar DeRozan or Zach Levine? You should ask for Zach Levine 100 percent of the time because he adds three-point shooting. He's attempted like eight or three-point attempts a game, and he's a high volume, high efficiency player. And he gets to play a role where you don't anticipate that he's going to be the guy trying to close the games for you. So if you had to pick between the two of your Lakers fans, you should probably go with Zach, young Hollywood, also younger um, and under contract for a long time. You have to worry about that part of it with DeMar DeRozan. You have to extend this offseason. I would rather get Zach if I'm a Lakers fan, but I don't like either of these two traits as a Bulls fan. Trey Young gettable. <clears throat> okay. Trey Young, Bruno Fernando, Wesley Matthews for D'Angelo. Why am I reading this article? D'Angelo Russell, Rui Hachimura, Torian Prince, Jalen Hushafino, and one first round pick. No. Do I, I'm just going to say no. That's not enough value. And I know Trey Young is struggling to shoot for the second year in a row. If you're trading Trey Young away, you cannot convince the fans of your organization that this is what you get back for Trey Young. Like, no. Just not. Honorable mentions, uh, Buddy Heald, I guess, is an honorable mention. And y yeah, uh, Tyus Jones, Malcolm Brogdon are also honorable mentions. Buddy Heald, Bojan Bogdanovic. What was your favorite, at least favorite trade here? A lot of Lakers, for sure, for the second article. I don't really like any of the second article trades, really. But uh, the first article had a couple ones that made me think. So I like that. Leave a like, subscribe. I go watch, listen to the Kenny Beach podcast, I guess.